And we're back. Dynamic effort lower day today. The last real dynamic effort lower day of the meat prep. And it feels like it is the last dynamic effort lower day on the meat prep. And what I mean by that is like, with how I feel, I really don't want to squat fast. I really don't want to pull fast. I really just want to go home and go back to bed. But the thing is that if I were to just go home and get out of bed, I wouldn't be getting that snappiness that I want to get to finish out this meat prep. So, excuse me, keep burping up my monster. Goal for today is to wake the frick up, be as assertive as I can. And even if I don't want to smash that bar, I'm going to smash that bar because I have no other option at this point but to do so because I want to have good meat prep and like, Speed work, it's uncomfortable. Speed work, when you're tired, it's uncomfortable, but no one gives a shit. Make it uncomfortable, do good, do your best, move that bar fast, even if you don't feel like it, and that way you are going to get something from it. So let's get warming up and get the job done. All right, work set time, just 150 kilos on the bar again. Gonna do my best to make them as snappy as possible. And if we're feeling good, gonna cap her at just three sets, continue the volume decrease trend. Yep. Good. Pull in. Yep. Good. Big lats. <coughs> Good. There you go. Yes, what? Good. Fuck yeah. That's all I need. Groove feels fucking great, so. That was also my best sense. And mission accomplished. Groove felt some snap achieved, shook the rust off after that 40 kilo squat. And like, even if I do feel like physically sluggish like forcing myself to bring it and put some snap in the bar like it it woke me up a bit and i'm i'm stoked to feel it and i guess that means it is time to do some speedy pulling and straight into it no warm-ups not because i'm cool but because i'm lazy and the bar already had plates on it And I've talked about this a little bit before, but I get shit all out of conventional speed pulls and I can just like wiffle ball it through my sticking point and don't actually have any tension. But sumo speed pull, 
I'm so bad at sumo and it's so hard on my hips. I've just makes them work the whole way through and carries over really well back to conventional. They feel freaking atrocious, but it's the kind of atrocious that I know is gonna make the total go burr. Ash on fire. Yeah, it's fucking, it's working. One more. Last one. So speed pull's done. Stoked with the snap. Stoked with how much ass I felt, cause like I got a nasty booty cheek pump there, which I mean, it tells me that I'm doing them well and they're gonna do what I want them to do for me for my conventional, so happy with that. But current conundrum is that number one, with how close I am to the meat, I don't really wanna do anything hard for accessories. And all of the like relatively easy shit that I could be doing in the gym is occupied right now. So we'll have to figure something out. And solution to that conundrum over in the strongman area of the gym, not to do strongman shit because I am way too much of a pussy for that, but I saw the sandbag, I was like, that looks like a nice height and a nice shape. Maybe I was wrong, that'll work. Yeah, to do Bulgarians on. Look at that, figured something out. I'm just gonna do body weight reps, trying to get a nice stretch through the hip flexor on the backside get a nice little quad and glute pump on the front side and just try to feel good is the goal <sighs> yeah that is enough for that side I'm trying to figure out where the fuck to go on the sandbag thought it would be like a friendlier shape for these than it has actually turned out to be but Whatever, we're here. We're doing it. <sighs> yeah. And screw the sandbag. That was a stupid idea, so. Got the bench out. Hopefully this is a less stupid idea. Yeah, that's, that is how a Bulgarian should feel. And like, of course, like this is what people do Bulgarians on. So no fucking shit that it feels better than the sandbag, you know? Big surprise, Seth. Losing balance, so I figure that's enough for that side. And I can't balance again. Good thing I'm filming this so people can laugh at me. Wow. Blaming it on the fatigue. Maybe finding the groove now. There we go. And I don't want to do Nordics today. Definitely don't want to do GHRs. But we got like the world's sickest Lang Lego machine. So gonna give it a whirl. Last time I used this was like right after the pec surgery and like getting in and out was almost deadly. And like intent with any lying leg curl is I want to try to keep my glutes squeezed as hard as I can and try to make sure that I'm having as little pelvic movement as possible so that I'm not like rocking the pelvis too much and cheating away from the hams with the low back. So hopefully it looks like that on video. I can't, it feels like I'm doing okay, but who knows? My one was kind of shitty, so that'll be it for the set. I'll go lighter on the next one, do a better job. All right, set number two. Gonna hype the pants up just to hopefully enhance video retention. Ooh, baby.
I'm just doing my best to squeeze glutes, manage that pelvic position, get a nasty feel in those hammy jammies. And like doing these strict versus just like jerking on it, I can get away with so much freaking less weight in the stack and be so much more productive with actually training the hamstrings. Wow. And Darrell's taking his, I don't want to call it his last heavy pull because it's not like it's going to be heavy for him. This is going to be about last warm up for him on meet day. So let's spectate. Yeah! There you go. Yeah, it looks better too. Well, I'd say he's ready. Sorry, YouTube, but I don't think I have anything that I can use for an Instagram reel yet today, so bear with me here. Another old school West Side movement, standing abs. I do this a little bit differently than most people because I'm blocking my legs against the thigh pad and lat pull down. Then I'm gonna squeeze my glutes. And the goal here is to initiate by flexing my abs, pulling rib cage down first, finishing that rib cage movement, getting really gnarly ab contraction, then going into a little bit of hip flexion, letting go of the abs at the top, resetting with the glute flex, curling in rib cage first. And if you are someone who is intolerant to spinal flexion, intolerant to hinging, this can be a really good way to reintroduce the movement because this is basically like breaking up a reverse band. It's decreasing your body weight. It's forcing you to use your abs and then your hip flexors to control that flexion. And if we can get more comfy here, we can eventually bridge our way back towards rounding and hinging with load or with just body weight. I think that was good enough for a real, eh? Okay, yeah, good. Thank you for bearing with me, YouTube. Now that I actually do some work. And these are gnarly. Like, I, I love them. They're one of my favorite ways to train rectus abdominis. All right, set number two. And another thing that these are really valuable for in addition to just like training your abs is if you're someone who has really nasty low back pumps, like a lot of times those people are just like jammed way into spinal extension. And then doing some of these where we are trying to lead with the glib cage, push low back backwards and getting that spinal flexion, this can actually really help with giving you the range of motion access and the abdominal control to make your low back pumps a whole lot less shitty. And like at this point of meat prep with the food and the pharmaceuticals, that is a valid concern right now. You're good, don't worry. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, it's not gonna ruin anything. Ah. So yeah, standing abs are freaking sick. 10 out of 10. And that is that. Another day that felt pretty meh, but at least went okay. And like, I'll take this all day long in this point in training cycle. And like, what you guys gotta understand is if you are peaking hard for a powerful age, not only are these days necessary, because like this is a direct result of how well my 400 kilo squat went. Like I feel like this, because of that 400 kilo squat and then like having to train while feeling like this like training while feeling like this and getting some stimulus in letting my body know that it still can move not allowing myself to get stiff not allowing myself to just you know sit on the couch all day like doing this today is what's going to allow me to have a good last pull on sunday so like the days like today they are absolutely necessary and 
when they do happen, because they will, you just got to not let it get in your head. You got to do your best with it. You got to come in and be assertive and move that bar with as much authority as you can. And then just train appropriately on accessories, get the job done, get feeling good, then get your ass out of there and go home so you can get yourself into bed and get some sleep and then probably get some food before you go to sleep too, because nutrition is also important. But my brain is on sleep right now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the vlog. Peace out and have a good night.